Now, I, I just want people to get a perspective of uh, how uh, these uh, commentators uh, f felt about uh, this particular debate. And then there's one particular section that I'm going to zero in on. I'm not sure how deep it is in this commentary, uh, but I'm going to try to uh, play as much of it as I can. I want to bring in our commentators. Uh, Maria Cardona is joining us. Also, uh, Jeffrey Lord is joining us. Donna Brazil is here as well. And Van Jones. Maria is a Democratic strategist and 2008 senior Clinton campaign advisor. Jeffrey is a Trump supporter and a former Reagan White House political director. Donna is a top Democratic Party official. And Van is a former senior advisor to uh, President Obama. Uh, Donna, let's start with you. Your thoughts on what you heard on the stage. Well, within, I think, the first 20 minutes, Karen Tomlety, a wonderful journalist, uh, she posed a question that I think a lot of Americans want to know. And she said, is Donald Trump a racist? Now, uh, Secretary Clinton said, basically, you can draw your own conclusions, but she went on to talk about the un-American things that he has said and how it's divisive uh, and his tone. Uh, but she also pointed out that she was one of the first politicians to call him on uh, his comments about Mexi Mexicans and others. The reason why I think that's relevant is because on the Republican side, you have a lot of turmoil right now. And I think part of the reason is because uh, Donald Trump hesitated on the second try, the third try, to denounce uh, the Ku Klux Klan and David Duke or uh, disassociate himself. So I thought that was a very, very important so question. I, I thought Secretary Clinton Donald, was resilient. She handled herself very let's, well. She had a lot of tough questions. Let's play that, uh, that moment for our viewers just so they know what you're referring to. Let's play it. Secretary Clinton, you've known Donald Trump a long time. You've seen what kind of campaign he's running. Secretary Clinton, is Donald Trump a racist? You know, Karen, I'm going to follow my friend Senator Sanders' model here. Um, if I'm so fortunate enough to be the Democratic nominee, there will be a lot of time to talk about him. Um, I was the first one to call him out. I called him out when he was calling Mexicans rapists, when he was engaging in rhetoric that I found deeply offensive. I said, basta. And I am pleased that... That basta was pandering. Others, others are also joining in making clear that his rhetoric, his demagoguery, his trafficking in prejudice and paranoia yeah. Uh, has no place in our political system, especially from somebody running for president who couldn't decide whether or not to disavow the Ku Klux Klan and David Duke. So and people can draw their own conclusions about him. But I will, I will just end by saying this. You don't make America great by getting rid of everything that made America great. It's interesting, Donna, because I think later on, uh, Bernie Sanders actually used the word racism to describe some of Donald Trump's rhetoric. Yes, he did. But again, I, I, I don't think uh, the candidates tried to avoid a question that I think Donald Trump uh, needs to, to be asked, and I think he needs to answer it. Clearly, many of us in the, in, in, across America have made up our own mind in terms of what we believe is going on, but it was an important question. I don't believe that they said yes or no. They said draw your own conclusions, and I'm, I'm sure that's what's happening on the Republican side as well as the Democratic side. Van Jones, uh, what did you make of this? I mean, again, I come back to, the, to the, just the, I mean, who would have thought, and I don't know that Hillary Clinton would have thought at the start of this race that she, at this stage of the race, would have been on the stage next to, you know, still arguing next to Bernie Sanders, a resurgent Bernie Sanders in Michigan. Well, I, I think she certainly did not. In fact, I don't think he thought <laughs> that um, uh, tonight he would be standing there uh, as a victor with the wind uh, at his back in the way that he has. Look, um, you got to look at both these two candidates. A lot of their strengths, their great strengths, were on full display tonight. Hillary Clinton uh, just at times displaying just a dazzling mastery of policy nuance. That clean energy question. Uh, that, you know, frankly, a lot of progressives have been concerned. No abortion questions, not enough climate change questions, both of those on the table. Hillary Clinton's um, uh, uh, response on the clean energy question, talking about uh, resilience and how that could be a bipartisan issue and how she could use that, I and mean, that was just a tour de force. Bernie says, you know, campaign finance reform, political revolution. No comparison between the level of policy nuance and sophistication on a key issue for Democrats. At the same time, Bernie Sanders, 
uh, incredibly appealing. Uh, he's, he's back to being the cuddly cur curmudgeon as opposed to the cutting curmudgeon from the last debate. Um, and really, I think, was able to uh, 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 bring uh, to a different audience uh, that same sensibility and energy. And you saw the response in the crowd. So I think both of them had very strong nights. Hillary Clinton got punched and punched and punched and punched. And it, yeah, she was annoyed. Anybody would have been annoyed. I think she handled herself very well under that much pressure. Um, the last thing I want to say about Bernie Sanders, one of the things about him uh, that people love, he is an unapologetic leftist. He did not uh, back down. Uh, back in the 80s, there was a big chunk of the American left, very mad at Reagan for his uh, military adventures in Latin America, and who, who uh, were opposed to the interventions. He did not back down from that. That makes him incredibly authentic. It also would be tough for him, I believe, in a general election. And we, this is the first time you saw him have the opportunity to back away from those positions. He did not. Makes him authentic, but it also shows you the kind of trouble he would have in a general election. I don't believe it would be trouble. You know, let's actually play, before I go uh, continue on the panel, let's just play that, uh, his response to the, the question about Cuba. In retrospect, have you ever regretted the characterizations of Daniel Ortega and Fidel Castro that you made in 1985? The key issue here was whether the United States should go around overthrowing small Latin American countries. You didn't I think the that question. that was a mistake, both in Nicaragua and Cuba. Look, let's, let's look at the facts here. Cuba is, of course, an authoritarian, undemocratic country. And I hope very much, as soon as possible, it becomes a democratic country. But on the other hand, it, on the other hand, it would be wrong not to state that in Cuba they have made some good advances in health care. They are sending doctors all over the world. They have made some progress in education. I just want to add one thing to the question you were asking, Senator Sanders. I think in that same uh, interview, he praised what he called the revolution of values in Cuba and talked about how people were working for the common good, not for themselves. I just couldn't disagree more. You know, if the values are that you oppress people, you disappear people, you imprison people, even kill people for expressing their opinions, for expressing freedom of speech, that is not the kind of revolution of values that I ever want to see anywhere. See, now that's why I say that uh, these uh, uh, mainstream media organizations like CNN uh, are in the bag for Clinton because in that the first section you saw uh, Hillary Clinton getting asked a question, uh, but they didn't play any type of a response from um, Bernie Sanders. But they play something uh, basically that's halfway going after him, and then the, uh, they give uh, Clinton's uh, Clinton a, a chance to get the last word in on it. So, in my opinion, what they did here was wrong. Maria Cardona, uh, clearly something which, in a in a general election, uh, will is something which will stand in Hillary Clinton in much better stead than uh, probably Bernie Sanders' response. I think that's right, but I think even even before we get to the general election, Anderson, let's think about where we are today. We're in Florida, where Florida's Hispanic electorate, now the majority of the Hispanic electorate, has a lot of people that are coming from South America. And so this argument from Bernie, and I agree with Van, you got to give him credit for being authentic and not backing down. That's who he is, and he's unapologetic about it. But my Twitter feed blew up from people who are from here, who, who come from those countries who have socialists, who have authoritarian regimes, and the kind of language that Bernie uses when he talks about this scares them. So I don't think that it will just hurt him in a general election, but I think it could hurt him here in Florida where a lot of those people don't have fond memories of those kinds of governments that they actually fled and came here to, to get away from. Jeffrey Lord, uh, as a non-Democrat here, uh, as a Republican, um, what do you think <laughs> not only of that, of, that, of that answer, but also the, the deportation issue? I mean, it could not be a starker contrast to the Republicans to have both candidates on the stage saying no more deportations of essentially any illegal uh, immigrants who are currently here, adults or children, as long as they're not criminals or terrorists or, or people are trying to do harm. Well, first I'd like to thank uh, Secretary Clinton for defending President Reagan's uh, policies and ending the Cold War. 
which did, of course, include opposition to the communists in Nicaragua, which was part of the entire policy, and it worked. And uh, stunned as I am, uh, apparently Hillary Clinton has a Reaganite streak to her, and I thank her for that. Um, in terms of deportations, to, to be perfectly candid, this is going to be a huge issue uh, here. I mean, we, as we all know, to use one example of, of any number of examples, Jamil Shaw Jr., an African-American 17-year-old in Los Angeles, was shot to death by an illegal immigrant gangster who shouldn't have been in the country in the first place. His parents, his parents are supporting Donald Trump. There, there is every reason in the world for them to be angry about the state of the uh, illegal immigration situation in this country. So this is going to be an issue. Donald Trump has raised it. It's propelled him. A lot of Americans are legitimately upset about it, and we're going to be discussing this in the fall without question. See, and this is what pisses me off. This guy is going to turn around and take one or two examples of somebody breaking the law, okay, an illegal, uh, illegal person breaking the law, to uh, throw the entire group of uh, uh, illegal immigrants in the country under the bus. That's a bunch of bullshit. But I, well, I, it's I, also I, interesting, uh, John, can, can, uh, go ahead then. You know, I just, I, I think it's unfortunate. You know, there is, I think, going to be an attempt on the part of Trump, assuming he is the general election um, uh, candidate for the Republicans, uh, to try to pit people against each other, to, to grab an African-American a conservative family that suffered a tragedy and use that African-American family as a battering ram against the entire uh, uh, immigrant community. That kind of politics, I think, is, is unworthy of our country. Um, yes, there are many, many tragedies, but when you turn, when you use a, 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 the death of a child um, as a political weapon against the whole community, it's unfortunate, it's wrong, and I hope the African-American community will see this as what it is, something that's unacceptable and pushed back. Well, the Shaw family is very upset. Go ahead. Well, I said that the Shaw family is very upset. They're the ones that have taken the initiative here. From Van's point of view, we have a slight echo. Smear an entire community simply because, you know, it's horrific what happened to that young man, but we should not smear an entire community. And that's, I think, the large issue that we have to get to when we have these contentious debates about immigration reform uh, and border security. And you look at that, the huge contrast between what my friend Jeffrey just brought up and the, the, the stunning moment tonight, Anderson, when the question came from the woman whose husband was deported, yeah. the woman from Guatemala. That was a tear-jerking moment for anybody who has ever come into contact with a family who has had a family member deported. That was a moment that I think just underscores the huge differences between where the Democrats are on this whole issue of deportation, undocumented immigrants, making sure that they're able to be here if they don't, haven't uh, committed any criminal acts to continue to try to live out their American dream and give them a path to citizenship, which is frankly where the majority of the American people are, versus a Republican Party where one of the questions is whether their front runner is a racist. I think that says it all. Well, let me, if I, I mean, not to, not to, not to relitigate uh, Van and my conversation, but I, I must say, uh, I mean, this is what happens with Democrats on race. I'm still waiting for Mrs. Clinton or any Democrat to get the Democratic Party formally on record uh, apologizing for slavery. I mean, we can start there and go on. So, uh, you, you know, if they want to get into that, then we no, can get into that too. You know, we will. He's got to be out of his fucking mind to 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 uh, bring that into the conversation. We call the, the, the founders of our country and, and their failure to understand the humanity of all people. Jeffrey, we could get into that, but I'm sure there's a large issue uh, <laughs> than, than going back to get that, that litigated. Get him, Donna. Well, let's... Uh, let's here. We're going to take a short break. Uh, we're going to check in uh, with the spin room. We're going to fact check the candidates uh, and more as our debate coverage continues uh, from Miami. Now, this is what I mean when I'm talking about CNN actually uh, taking sides uh, between uh, Sanders and Clinton. Yeah, well, the 
word that they've come out into the spin room with, Anderson, is they think that she really landed punches when it came to making points about immigration reform, and as they put it, revealing that Secretary, or pardon me, Senator Sanders' positions now are different than what he had in the past. Uh, a couple debates ago at the C at, in Milwaukee, there was actually a missed opportunity by Secretary Clinton to highlight Bernie Sanders' support really with labor uh, in voting against comprehensive immigration reform under the Bush administration, uh, a bill that was authored by Senator Ted Kennedy, obviously a liberal lion of the Senate. Tonight, Hillary Clinton did not miss that opportunity, really trying to show that Bernie Sanders was in opposition and that he wasn't aligned with immigration advocates. The other thing that they think uh, may stick in this is that video that you saw where he was talking in positive terms about the Castro regime in 1985. This is something that he has written about over the years. In 1989, he actually went to Cuba, visited with the mayor of Havana. Uh, he didn't denounce that video, and they are highlighting that, especially here in Florida, of course. But look, this is all happening in this uh, afterglow, or which the opposite of that, I guess you could say, from this Michigan primary that just dealt her a stinging loss last night. And so because of that, they admit, you know, they are pushing through at this point, looking to next Tuesday. Of course they're looking to Florida, but they really think she has an advantage here. They're looking to Ohio now. You saw Hillary Clinton double down on that uh, auto bailout argument that Bernie Sanders did not support the auto bailout argument. Some people thought that may have backfired, so that was an interesting point to see if that's going to hold as she pushes towards Ohio next Tuesday. Yeah, certainly the Sanders campaign pushed back hard on that, saying essentially it was kind of a low blow uh, for Hillary Clinton to bring up uh, in the uh, the last debate. Uh, let's go to Jeff Zeleny covering the Sanders camp. Uh, Jeff, what are, you, what are you hearing from them tonight? Well, Anderson, the Sanders campaign came into this debate uh, really, you know, on a... Okay, so uh, anyway, I'm going to end this video uh, right there.